Welcome to a brand new series where I visit regional theatres to find out more about what's going on in theatres around the country. This week I'm in Sirencester to find out what's going on at the Barn Theatre. <laughs> Jamie Chapman Dixon. Hello, you right? How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for coming down. Where are we? We're at the Barn Theatre in Sirencester on an amazingly sunny day, which is great for once. Do you want to come on in? Yeah. Come on. So what are these? Are these all the shows? So yeah, this is our programming for the next year. So we decided to uh, release the entire year in one go. So that's The Butterfly Lion, Shakespeare's Henry V, 39 Steps, Day Long Legs, and then a new version of A Christmas Carol, which would be great. Uh, Finn Anderson and Alan Pollock to do that one, which is really exciting. Uh, so we'll go on through. We'll head through box office first, and then we'll go through the theatre, and then we'll go through our office spaces, and then we'll go to the restaurant. We'll grab a drink, maybe. These are our new doors. They're a bit big. Yeah, so I haven't got her address. Yeah. She left them at ours. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Dylan Winford was just so. But obviously, we've only had five shows so far, so hopefully by the end it'll be covered in names. Um, hoping to get some more uh, debuts here as well. We love to give people debuts. So we also have two more dressing rooms upstairs, which is a bit tight up there. Cool, so we will head on through. So if you come on down here. And now we are directly backstage. So on the other side of that door is our theatre and our uh, cast are currently working in there. Uh, and this is our pit. So this is completely underneath the stage. So this is where you'd have your musicians, your conductor, or your scene changes would be down here. So if we have a little look. So it's a bit smoky down here at the moment because you've got the haze for the lights. And then if you look around, it's obviously got props and paintings because we're just in the middle of our tech week. So lots of stuff going on. Um, so we have all my... So during productions, this is where your orchestra would be, or your band? Yes. Uh, under the stage. So far, we've only done acting musician productions, so we haven't actually had any bands down here. But we do encourage uh, amateur groups and uh, receiving shows to come to the theatre, and they have, uh, on occasion, used this space. Uh, the pro shows are in-house. We've just used it as a walkthrough at the moment. Um, but we do have two trap doors, which is lovely, and then our hydraulic lift, which is kind of the star of the show, even though it's not used in this show. Has it been used in any of your shows yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Uh, and I'll tell you why. The reason why we haven't used it yet is because we want to transfer our shirts, we want to give them future life. And the reason we haven't used this is because a lot of our directors have said, if I use this, it's going to be tricky to re-block it for a transfer. So we've said, okay, use it if you like, it's there, yeah. if you want to. Eventually we will use it. Nice. Have you played on it? Uh, no, I actually haven't. Yuan did, on the opening of the theatre, Yuan kind of came up in a ball of smoke when they opened. <laughs> Which is great. I no, think they no. used it for the, the, the kids show on Aladdin, so a bunch of nine-year-olds kind of loving life. Um, yeah, and then we have all our, all our monitors, all our feeders uh, linking up stage. Um, and you might be able to hear them a little bit off stage at the moment. So you used to work as a producer in London? Yes. So I was based in London. I, I'd always done my work in London. Um, and then this job came up. Uh, I was in competition with UN. And I drove on down just to see their show, The Secret Garden, and uh, it was it was amazing. It was brilliant. Um, the space, the tech, the actors, everything about it was so nice. And even the kind of the environment that they had here was just something that you wanted to be a part of. So I had a meeting straight after with him and the owner. And on my drive home, I'd been offered a job. And then I had to go back and uh, tell everyone that I was kind of relocated. A week later. I was here. That was and you've had a really successful first year. So you won the Orange Theatre of the Year award for the Stage Awards. So it's the best kind of small theatre in the country, which is great. And uh, we were up against Omnibus Theatre <coughs> and um, the Vaults Festival, which we honestly didn't think we were going to win. And when we did, we were ecstatic. Me and Yuan attended, and uh, it was it was brilliant. And we'll we'll see the award later. It's upstairs. Amazing. Um, so this is costume and set, and then we actually have two of our tech team move in uh, set and props over here because it's our kind of set workshop. If you walk on through, you'll be able to see that it goes through to our set area, which is kind of shut moment. But that there, that there, that garden, that is Yuan's back garden. Oh, so, so <laughs> nice and handy. Yuan lives next door to the theater and it goes straight into his back garden, which is nice. And this is Harry, one of our tech guys. Hey mate. Hello. <laughs> and that is Chris, our sound Hey! Hello. <laughs> so if you want to come on through here. So these are the toilets for the interval. So they only be used during the interval and then they use uh, the front of house toilets otherwise. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through to the theatre. They're taking at the moment doing tech notes. So we're going to be a bit quiet. It's going to be very dark. But we'll have a look. Okay. Good. Space. So they're just on break at the moment, so they're doing their tech. So this is the time. This is the and time. How many seats is it? 203 in total, but these seven here we reserve as uh, disabled. Okay. So we don't actually sell these seven until 15 minutes before the show starts. Uh, oh, wow. So this is the current set, the current show at the moment. It's the butterfly line. So 
as you can see, we're about six meters wide, about six meters deep. Oh, have you not seen that yet? You'll be able to see all our tech. It's amazing, nice. isn't it? So we're very lucky that we don't have to hire anything. We own all of our own tech. Uh, so lights, sound, uh, mics, uh, are all owned in-house, which is a huge bonus. So we don't have to spend extra income on uh, hiring them in and out. Um, what we'll do is we'll walk around the front and we'll walk down the side. So all your productions are in-house at the moment. Are you planning, uh, are they? Yeah, so we do six, uh, we do, sorry, five in-house productions a year. And then we do, we do take receiving shows, but they're usually shorter runs, so maybe three to seven days. Um, but we only do about three or four of them a year. So the majority of our work is done in-house. Um, so we hire our directors, designers, etc., from London um, and bring them down here, which is quite nice. Then you go into our wing space. There's not a huge amount of space back here. So this is all they get. So to bring uh, uh, props on, set on, they only have that. So it's very deceiving when you see things coming on and that's all they've got. Um, it's the same the other side as well. But we do have stairs, which you can see here. Uh, they actually are on both sides, but we've actually blocked off the other side so you can put a bigger, larger set on the other side, which is quite nice. In our fog machine, baby lion. It's our medium lion for three. Um, bless him. A lady called Mayor Kirkman Richards designed them and they're phenomenal. Walk through and go down. Just walk through, and if you mind your step. So this is all the parts that the audience don't get to see. So it's the kind of rough and ready. So this is where all the actors will be running on and off. Yeah, so when you see an actor kind of run off that side and they automatically kind of come on the other side, they'll come through here, run across, which we saw earlier. Then this is the actual, the other stairs upstairs. We block those off. So you come up here. So you come to the action, run up here. Then keep going. And then do a U. You come up here. And you're back on. So anytime you see an actor going from one to the other, that's the exact track they will do. Um, and it's the same if they're going and they appear from the back. They will run round up here, run up the side, and then run down the side. So you have you have four entrances. Um, in the actual auditorium. Uh, it's a nice space. It's, we think it's a good, good, perfect size really for what we kind of need. What they're doing as we speak is they've finished the show, they've run it all, so the director is just going through the final points just to make sure everything is perfect for what she needs. Same with sound cues, lighting cues, set, costume props, making sure everything is correct for tonight's first preview in front of our first live uh, audience. What we'll do is we'll leave them to it and we'll head on through to our bar. So, I'm going to leave them to it. They've got how long now? They've got three hours until audiences are in there for the first time, which is great, exciting, because this show is our first of the year. So is this where the audience arrives, through those doors? Yes, so how it works is when an audience member arrives, these, do these double doors at the front are completely open, so they'll walk on through, they'll walk on through to our each room area, and then they'll be able to give up two options. They can either go to our bar, which is fully stocked with uh, beer, wine, the usual kind of uh, ailments, but we have, do have a full stocked bar on the other side, which is about 50 gins and rums and whiskies, etc. So that, if this overflows or somebody wants a cocktail, something special, we kind of send them through there. So the next thing we have, we've just released our newest brochure. So, Bar Theatre 2019. As I said outside, we try to release them all in one go, just so people can book as far in advance as possible. So, these are our five shows for the year and uh, all the dates that they're on. So we have the Butterfly Lion, which is the one that opens tonight. And then we have uh, Henry V, which is gonna be a new reimagining. A uh, director called Hal Chambers is directing it. And uh, we had our, one of our production meetings last week and it sounds amazing. And our cast, wow, our cast is amazing for it. Absolutely brilliant. Um, 39 Steps, obviously a classic. You can't go wrong with it. It is just such a funny, witty, humorous show. And that, that one is, is uh, well, that's the one that a lot of people are really excited about. 
Um, Daddy Long Legs is a musical that not that many people have heard of. So it's a two-hand musical um, that was quite big in the States. Then it came over here, uh, this, the US version came to the St. James's Theatre when it was St. James and not the Palace. Um, and did okay, but it's never had a full run in the UK. So we decided to bring it over with the music. If you get the chance, just wait until you come here and see Because it is, a, the music is just, it melts. It, it absolutely melts you. So um, tell me more about the butterfly, what's that? Butterfly lion. So the butterfly lion is a, uh, it's a play by Michael Morperga, uh, obviously the writer of War Horse. Um, it's about a story between a young, young boy and a young white lion cub who kind of find each other and become friends. And it's their journey growing up. Sometimes they're apart, sometimes they're together, and uh, you have to see what happens in the end. But uh, there's a lot of stories about this kind of fable of a, uh, a young boy and a cub, and this is just Mike Morberg's take on it, and it's brilliant. It's heartwarming, it's, it's just brilliant. And lots of puppetry, lots and lots of puppetry. So our cast includes uh, three of the War Horse cast, two of them have literally just come off an 18 month tour, um, and then straight into this, which is, we're really lucky to have them. Tickets start at like £10 and they go up to about £32, £34, depending on the show. Um, the idea was we wanted to bring in all levels of uh, individuals, people who either didn't want to spend a huge amount on the theatre because it may be their first time for the theatre and they didn't know uh, what kind of the way to do it or they feel reluctant to come. Um, we also released uh, 500 tickets at £5. Um, just to introduce new people to the theatre and uh, younger audiences as well. Um, we appreciate that theatre can be expensive. Once you buy four tickets, four drinks at the bar and four programmes, it can go into the hundreds of pounds. So we've re-established our whole ticket structure this year. Where should we go? Should we go through here? Yeah. So this is one of our, uh, well, one of our meeting rooms. So today is quite special. We have uh, 50 teachers in today. And these teachers are all from different schools and they're here just to check out the show, check out the building and see if their students are appropriate for our production. So today obviously it's all about the butterfly line. Um, so that's really interesting. So you invite people to come and tell them about the show? Yeah, we, we supply comps and free tickets to a set number of schools and teachers to make sure that they feel comfortable in the space and make sure that they kind of scouted it out before we kind of call them up and say, do you fancy doing some school bookings? Obviously we know there's a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for schools and trips, etc. So we want to make sure that we kind of entice them in, seeing as we're in a new building. Um, and that gentleman is Booth. Is, uh, he's our caretaker slash handyman slash everything man. If you need anything, you ask Booth. Um, we'll come through here. So now we're in Ingleside House. So this is where all our offices are. So when we go back outside, you'll see the outside of it. But this used to be a schoolhouse years and years and years ago. Um, now we try to keep it uh, as relevant as possible and try to maintain the features. Um, parts of the building are very, very uh, high end and uh, brand new, like the atrium. And this is kind of, we wanted to make sure we had as many original features as possible. So this isn't open to the public? No. no. So this is all close to the public unless they book a room. So obviously all of these rooms are available to hire. So we do have kind of workshops, uh, uh, meeting rooms that NHS use it for screenings. So it's a lot of rooms like this. Um, our academy uses it for rehearsals. Um, our uh, Andram companies use it for auditions, those kind of things. Tell me more about your academy. So, the academy is called the Barn Academy. Um, it ranges from quite a young age, which is the Barneys, which are your kind of like five, six, seven, eight year olds. Cute then, name. Yep, yeah, isn't it? And then you have the, uh, the Barn Academy, which is kind of goes up to the age of 18. Um, obviously, that has actually started before the theatre. So that used to be called Stage Smart uh, a couple of years ago, and that pre-existed before the theatre. Uh, still run by Yuan and Ian. Um, it was, I think it was one of the things that they wanted to get started whilst they were building the site, just to give them something else to do and build up, build a brand up. So they started it up and we've had huge success with uh, our latest cohort um, leaving us and one of them going straight into Marius in the Les Mis tour, they're called Harry Apps, which is great, um, seeing as his only formal training was with the Bar Academy. Um, okay. So we want, to, we want to keep growing it, which is lovely. And he's such a nice guy. Um, so we come through, then, We'll go up the stairs. We'll head on up, and this is where kind of the barn 
Art Theatre offices are. So in here you have the production, marketing, fundraising and Barn Academy. So that is Yuan, artist director, kind of waving in the corner. Hello. Uh, Yuan, what are you up to? Um, we're actually looking at the first cut of a trailer for the Barn Academy's show Honk, the musical, which is on next week. No. Right, most all the most important stuff to be worked on this week. <laughs> so we've got... A little bit of stars and Yeah, well the thing is we did Just So, obviously as our, our pro show, and we wanted to do a kind of a, a semi-season of them, so Yuan decided to, uh, along with our uh, old Barn Academy leader, decide to put on uh, Honk, and it's going really well so far. So what's it been like kind of build an audience base oh, for a brand new theatre? Hard. Very, very difficult. You're, you're taking a 203 seat theatre in the middle of the Cotswolds where theatre didn't exist before, and you're bringing theatre to an audience that weren't necessarily after a theatre. I mean, they, they weren't crying out for theatre, they were crying out for an entertainment space because the cinema is now closed here. Uh, there isn't a huge amount of other uh, activities in this area. Uh, it's beautiful, it's a lot of markets and a lot of pubs and restaurants. Um, but for evening activities, there's not a huge amount to do. Um, so when we put it out, obviously, we started with a mailing list of zero, which was incredibly difficult. Because I'm sure, as many people know, that even selling a show with a mailing list of 30, 40,000 is difficult to sell, let alone having zero. Um, our first show went very, very well. It was a big launch. We put a lot into it. Um, and then it kind of, it's kind of snowballed from there, which is quite nice. The key factor was to bring in the London audiences as well, to show them the fact that there is good theatre outside of London, and that li London isn't the all-encompassing beast that it's kind of seen as. Um, you can go to other venues that are smaller as well, like the Hope Mill Theatre, uh, which have done amazing work over the last kind of couple of years. And then hopefully now we're kind of joining their ranks. Um, and are you finding people are coming out to you now? Yes to build no. up? So our... We have a map um, of obviously where all of our kind of audience come from, and not that many actually come from London. Uh, we do do a press list um, and a coach for press nights, so we arrange a coach on press night to bring everyone up, and then they return on the same night, which is really useful. But apart from that, we find that we've got a lot of people from Cambridge, Oxford, Bristol, those kind of areas at the moment, Swindon, Cheltenham. Um, we have got Jane, a couple hundred a year come from London, but we really want to build on that and bring as many people as possible. Um, ideally, we want to sell the place out. So, wherever you're from, come on down. You right? Hey. There Hello. you go. Yuan, uh, this is Phil. Phil, everyone, this is Yuan Lewis. He is our artistic Oops. director. Come to see. Um, so, why don't you take a seat? I'm literally going to go grab a drink. And I'll be back in a sec. Cool. So tell us about the barn. So you're a London boy as well. Oh, London boy. No, well, I'm a, I'm a Welsh boy, um, really. But uh, yeah, I, I spent a few years in London before coming down here to launch this project. And how's it been? Have they been welcoming to you and Jamie? Um, yeah, for, for sure. Absolutely. Well, I sort of was um, the instigator of uh, the rebuild of the barn theatre um, four years ago. So I've been, I feel like I've... Wow. lived here for a long time now um, and it's been a crazy crazy but a hugely rewarding project and we've still got so far to go but it's really been great and since Jamie got down here about was it nine ten months ago I think it was uh, maybe maybe coming up to a year ago um, it's been amazing to sort of have someone else who's been immersed in the theatre industry for a long time to come and join us on this project are you pleased with how it's gone for the first year? It couldn't have gone any better. The response from this community, um, whether it be some of the students in our Barn Academy or just people who live in Sirencester or theatre goers in the area or from, from an indus industry point of view, it's just been amazing what a small theatre in the middle of the Cotswolds has been able to achieve in uh, just while well, coming up to a year. No, I think we've just gone over a year since we opened, so that's incredible, really. And to be, yeah, to just get amazing people coming to work here, whether it's on the creative side or the actors or people, you know, um, you know, 
even getting someone like Jamie to come down and work with us as a producer. Uh, there's lots of these really exciting meetings that are now coming out of the woodwork with co-productions, this, that, and every, everything that's going on for future productions. It just all seems to have kicked off, which is great. And what would you like the theatre to become? What would you like it to be known for? Uh, yeah, good question. Um, I, um, I want it to be known as a theatre that the best performers come down to the what I consider one of the best parts of the country to do their very, very best work on what I hope will be one of the best stages so it's yeah that, that's it really it needs to be an environment for the work um, for the actors for the creatives it's an incredible blank canvas that we've got here in the barn and we've got the best palette of paints to play with and to be artistic with and I just really hope that it becomes known as a place that people go to to do their very very best work last year we we we, you know, we did a Simon Stevens play which wouldn't normally be treated as traditional um, but I think that we, ha we have a certain audience here and we need to um, bring them on the journey with us um, and that's the, the, the programming really will lean towards that but I will always want to bring in new stuff for example the Christmas Carol yes it's a Christmas Carol but it's a new adaptation of a Christmas Carol and a lot of the conversations we're having at the moment is how we can bring um, new writers into the fold to create new work here and we're already playing with lots of exciting ideas and titles so my hope is that by about 2022 that 50% of the programming will be new work. You started this about four years ago so were you approached to do it? No it was my, my idea. Your idea, um, yeah. amazing. Um, I was an actor, I was working up in London and my last job when I made the decision to start the barn I was working at the Park Theatre um, as an actor in a in a musical called Therese Rakan, based on the Emile Zola novella. Um, and at the time I'd seen all the brilliant work that Jez had done with launching the theatre up in Finsbury Park, Jez Bond, um, and I've been incredibly inspired by it um, and how he sort of transformed a community as well, not just, it's more than just a theatre, and that's kind of been my, um, been my tagline um, with this theatre, that the barn isn't just about putting on great professional work, it's not just about the amazing actors, and it's not just about the lights and selling tickets and this, that and the other, it's about creating a positive impact in our community. And theatre for me has always been about everything else that comes with a theatre, and that's really what this is about for me. So I'm, you know, although we've had lots of lovely offers about our shows going elsewhere, going into London or going on tour and this, that and the other, I'm actually committed to Sirencester and committed to the Cotswolds and the community here to make sure that they get the benefits, whether it's the young people um, getting to learn all those amazing skills we all learnt as actors, but actually taking it into their real lives. And it isn't about sort of creating mini West End robots, it's about creating amazing young people with a skill set, whether they wanted to go to law or politics or become a doctor, that they take these amazing skills that we have just, you know, thrust upon us in the theatre industry, but to take those into their lives. And, and the, the pride in this community. I've seen Sirencester change over four years, uh, a huge amount in the last year, and you know people are walking around the town proud of the Barn Theatre and proud of this community now, and that's been huge. It's been huge, and it just shows us proof in the concept that actually how vital theatre is for not just this community, but any community. So if there was a sort of call to action at the end of this um, mini interview, is the fact that you know it is unbelievable that anyone could ever consider cutting the arts um, and whether it's in education or whether it's in uh, funding to uh, venues like the Barn Theatre. Um, I've, I've seen right in front of my eyes over the last four years how a f community, it's young people, it, people of all ages, uh, the town, the, the businesses in the town have thrived off the development of a theatre so it's so much more than just a a luxury for us all to have. It's ingrained in our DNA as Brits. Um, the theatre is so vitally important to a community. And what the audience has been like compared to, because you know about aud audiences in London, how have they compared? Yeah, it's, uh, what, one thing I will say is when you meet someone who's in their 80s and the Barn Theatre is their first experience of live theatre, 
it's the best feeling in the world. Because instead of, yes, it's an amazing feeling to introduce a three, four year old to theatre and inspire them for their whole lives. But to bring someone who is pretty much set on their views and opinions and thoughts and then introduce them to a new kind of category they've never experienced before, it's it just opens their eyes and it's great. It really is. It's nice. And don't, I don't really feel like you get that as much in London. No, that's incredible. Yeah. You just take it for granted that everybody's seen theatre. Exactly. Within this industry, you think that everyone goes 10 times a week. But uh, outside the industry, the majority of people go once a year. And the majority of those people go to see pantomime. So it's nice to kind of introduce them to a show that may be a bit more quirky, maybe a bit more edgy or artistic. Something that isn't just a pantomime or something that they kind of expect to see, if that makes sense. Like, I love pantomime, don't get me wrong, but if people go to the theatre, they think, oh, we'll go to pantomime. No, let's go to an artistic small theatre. Um, so if you come on through. So this is Teatro. This is our adjoining sister restaurant. So a lovely gentleman called Ryan is the manager here, and we work quite closely together. Uh, we have 60 uh, seats in here, so we can accommodate 60 people at a time uh, in four different rooms. So the two you just saw, this one, and then our flamingo room as well. Nice. So for anybody wanting a nice meal and a bit of theatre, yeah. the barn's a place. Exactly, that's the idea. Then if you come on through, then you have our piano bar which opens in about an hour, so it's still a bit messy. But uh, we have live singers here, not performers from the theatre, but uh, external live singers. So they'll come in here, play a song, um, entertain whilst people drink their gins and champagne. Beautiful. No, it's a nice place. When it was designed, it was just, everything was thought out. Um, even during the raising, the piano up uh, by six inches, uh, colour styles, everything. We wanted to make sure that we want to keep the historic edge whilst bringing it up to date and giving it kind of that kind of young, funky vibe, which I think they did, which I'm really happy with. And then all our gin, which they're very, very proud of. They always say that they, get, they buy a new gin every couple of weeks to, to restock. Um, so if we go have a look, I'll get told off for everything at the start. So. Back in the garden, so there you go, there's Teatro. So, we're in our beer garden and pavilion area. So this is our courtyard, which is beautiful in the sunshine, hell in the rain. Um, but it leads up to our beer garden, which once again fits about 60 people. And then it goes along to our pavilion, which is a purpose-built uh, 400 uh, capacity kind of marquee space which we use for weddings, events, uh, corporate gigs, those kind of things. We would love at some point to do an immersive show in there but yeah we, we don't want to run before we walk but um and then obviously you can kind of see see the building a bit more. But yeah that's about it really. Nice. Are you that's enjoying it? Yeah it's great it is great it's one of them places that it's it's a family it's everyone here well Pretty much everyone here lives here or grew up here. The only two people who've kind of moved here for the job are myself and Yuan. Everyone else, our sound designer, media director, uh, uh, marketing, fundraising, um, a lot, all live in Sirencester and grew up in Sirencester, which is amazing. Um, and it's great to be the two kind of guys from London to kind of come here and be kind of out of our comfort zone. And instead of everything being open till 4 a.m., everything shuts at 10. Uh, and nothing's open on Sundays. But uh, no, it's nice. It's nice to get away. It's lovely to cycle, lovely to walk around. Um, I miss London, don't get me wrong, as everyone would. But for now, it's home. And yeah, I love it. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Jamie Chapman Dixon. My pleasure. Thank you for coming down. If you have any questions, obviously, about the Barn Theatre, obviously, just give us a shout. We're here and we're happy to answer. Um,